My wife and I for Halloween went to Universal Studios and visited the Harry Potter Park. And we wanted some props to wear for a costume. So I 3D printed a couple wands and these glasses and each of them had its own unique problem. I'll show you what they were on this week's belated Filament Friday. The first thing I printed was the Elder Wand that I found on Thingiverse by user Jake Reeves. I think this is the same one that Joel Telling did, the 3D printing nerd. Only he did the bigger two-piece one. This is the single piece. So I had to shrink it down to 60% of size and angled at 65 degrees to fit on my Flashforge Dreamer bed. Now it's floating in the air, so I needed to add support. So I used the support tool that's in Simplify 3D, and I just started with the generic supports, and I didn't like it. It left a lot of gaps, so I erased those, went back and set the post to two millimeters, and I only wanted supports from the bed. So generated support, and this looked a lot better, but there still were some gaps here at the end. So I used the Add New Support tool and manually placed two of them in there just to fill the gaps where I wanted it. Now there were also supports that I didn't want that it added. So I used the Remove tool and just clicked around to where I didn't want supports, didn't feel I needed supports. And that way it was easier to clean up and wasn't going to mess this thing up. So I went around to both sides, clicked them all. It took a little bit of time, but once I had it, I was ready to slice it. So now I printed this on the Flashforge Dreamer, which is a dual extruder, but I'm only going to use the left extruder with PLA. Uh, 0.2 layer height, three top and bottom layers, three shells. I am using a raft to support the supports and 40% fill. Um, I am using 200 degrees C and 60 degrees on the bed. Now I enabled cooling after the first layer because this is PLA and I printed at a 60, to 60 millimeters per second speed. So once I had all that, I sliced it and it looked pretty good on the surface, but I wanted to go deeper. So I set the movement speed just to see what the temperatures would be and I could see that it was going to definitely slow down at the top, which is what I wanted because that gives me the detail. And then inside, the fill looked good. The three outer shells showed up perfectly. So this looked like everything sliced the way I wanted it. So I was comfortable in sending this off to the printer. It said it would take one hour and 10 minutes and a little over, just under five millimeter, five meters of plastic. And here's the result. It looks really good. The fact that I printed on its side, the layers look like wood grain. It just came out really nice and the detail was excellent. So I went back and reprinted this with glow-in-the-dark filament. Now it's quite not quite as good a filament, but it's really cool that it glows in the dark. I really like the way this turned out. My wife wanted Hermione Granger's wand and I found this one that actually has an LED inside and lights up. I didn't have time to do that, but it also had a version with no LED, but it came in two halves. So I needed to bring those two together. So I brought that into Simplify 3D and they, for some reason, were just huge. So I had to downsize them from like a 2540 scale down to 600%. And that still was kind of too big for, you know, standing up. But I just left them standing up because I needed to bring these two together to make one wand. And I decided to try out the grouping tool that's within Simplify 3D. So I grabbed the moving uh, placement tool and I just worked until I got these lined up so the vines that actually wrap around this wand were lined up with both halves. And it worked out pretty good. It took me a few tries to get this thing to line up the way I wanted. But once I did, it looked like the two halves came together nicely. And they're kind of a weird angle, just the way they placed. But I didn't want to mess with it too much. So then I grabbed both halves and I went to Edit, Group Selection, and now the two were grouped together. So when I grabbed it, they moved as one. So then I needed to lay this down. So I made it 90 degrees on the bed and then I centered it to the bed and it fit perfectly. I didn't have to angle it or nothing. So I needed supports under it. So I used the same settings that I used with the Elder Wand, changed it to 0.2 or two millimeters and then off the bed. And then I let it generate supports. And this looked really good until I looked at the back of it. <laughs> For some reason, it still was sensing the two pieces and it was putting support material right in the middle of the wand. So I had to go back and remove those individually. So I clicked on the remove existing supports and then one by one, 
clicked on them to remove them. Now why it put supports in the middle of this thing if they're grouped together, I have no idea, but there must be a hole there in the, in the model. So I'll check that once I slice it. So once I removed all those, checked it throughout the wand, I couldn't find any other place where it did this, so then I just sliced it and it looked good. Now just to be safe, I chose different views. Like this shows the movement speed, so you can see the blue where it slows down for detail. But then I did the active tool head, it only showed one tool. And the feature type, it showed the raft, it showed the support, and then it showed the wand. I didn't see anything strange here, so then I, I knocked it down so I could see inside of it. And I couldn't see any gap that would have caused this thing to make those supports pop through. So I don't know what it was doing, to be honest with you, but this looked really good. After all that you know, work of getting those supports out of there, I was ready to print it, and here's the result. I printed this one with some brown PLA and the support broke away beautifully. So I handed it to my wife and then she decided to paint the vines with a green paint. And it came out really nice, a lot better than anything I could do. So that was her wand, she was happy with it. So now I just needed to make our glasses. Last thing to print were these Harry Potter glasses from user Belixo. And these seemed real easy to print. They laid flat on the bed, the arms were flat, so I thought this would be quick and easy and I needed to print two of these. So I positioned them on the bed and then I did a quick slice and oh, the arms were missing. There was something wrong with these files, they needed to be fixed. So now I had to take each individual STL file, each one was a separate file, and I brought it into Make Printable, which is a beta but seems to work really good. So I brought each one in, I set it to a high setting, and then it went to work repairing the file. And you can see it just slowly fills up this thing with a green color. And when it's ready, you can download it. And then it downloads, you get to choose which one I chose .stl. And then I took each one and did that. And so I end up with three fixed files. You see they're all named the name plus fixed. So once I had these, I re-sliced it. And this took a little bit longer, but there it was perfectly in place. They looked really good. So that was how I repaired these guys so I could print them. And then once I printed these, I needed to glue them together and then my wife painted the scars on them. So it turned out really good. People seemed to really like the glasses. Wherever we went, we got compliments and some people asked us where they could buy them. We told them we 3D printed them and one person said, ah, muggle magic. So that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to do some magic of your own, just click on that Patreon link and give me a dollar a month. It goes a long way. It's magic in my book. <laughs> Otherwise, check out these videos, and that's it. I'll see you next time on Filament Friday. You know, I never tested if this thing works. Expecto Filament Friday!